Every four years, we have a leap year. In a leap year, we add a day onto the end of February to make February 29th. We do this because a year isn't exactly 365 days, but it's 365 and a quarter days. But every once in a while, we also have something called a leap second. This is where we add a single second onto the end of a day within a year. But what is a leap second? Why do we need to add one? And what problems does adding a leap second cause? Every few years it's announced that a leap second needs to be added to the clocks. A group of scientists decide to add a second to the end of one of the days in a year. This is typically June 30th or December 31st. And this is to keep the length of the day and the clocks correct. But why is it that the length of the day can be changed by so much as a second over just a few year period? Well, there are several reasons, and it's all down to the way that the Earth rotates. The fact that we have day and night down here on Earth is due to the fact that the Earth rotates around. At some point in time, one side of the Earth is facing towards the Sun, and this is what causes daytime. 12 hours later, that same side of the Earth is rotated around to face away from the Sun, and this is nighttime. 12 hours later, the same side of the Earth faces back towards the Sun again. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one full rotation, which is why there are 24 hours in a day. But it doesn't take exactly 24 hours for the Earth to make one full rotation. This is because the speed at which the Earth is rotating is beginning to slow down. So to counteract this, scientists came up with a great idea of adding a leap second every few years to counteract the fact that the days are becoming longer as the Earth is beginning to slow down its rotation. Now, if we didn't add this leap second, what happens is the time would eventually shift out of place, and midnight on our clocks would eventually become midday, and midday would be in the middle of the night. And it's all down to the moon and the physics of the Earth that's causing this slowing down. You see, the moon and the Earth are experiencing something called tidal friction. As the moon orbits around the Earth, the gravitational pull from the moon is slowing down the rate at which the Earth is rotating. Eventually what will happen is the time it takes for the Earth to make one full rotation will equal the length of the time that it takes for the Moon to make one full orbit. What this means is that Moon will always be in the same position in the sky above the Earth. Now this isn't going to happen for billions and billions of years, but in the meantime the Moon is actually slowing down the rotation of the Earth by around 2 milliseconds every century. But there are many other reasons why the rotation speed of the Earth can be slowed down and they're all due to the inner workings of the Earth. If the crust and the inner core are rotating at different speeds, this can slow down the rotation speed of the Earth. If large land masses that were once compressed by huge amounts of ice begin to rise to the surface, this can slow down how fast the Earth rotates. Even one-off events, such as the 2004 earthquake in the Indian Ocean, increase the length of the day by a really noticeable amount. And it's based on these events that a group of scientists known as the IERS decide in which years we need to add a leap second. Because the rotation of the Earth doesn't slow down on a regular basis, the scientists are only able to announce six months in advance when we need to add a leap second. Since 1999, we've only had four leap seconds added. But in the years previous to that, a leap second has been added in almost every single year. And it's based on the really careful observations of the rotation of the Earth that scientists are able to decide in which years we need to add a leap second. Although you might think it's really great to get an extra second in your year, a leap second can actually be a really big problem. Now, it's really easy for us to add an extra second onto our clock, though I suspect most of us probably won't do it, but it's much harder for a computer to be able to do it. Because leap seconds don't happen in regular occurrences, unlike days being added in leap years, it's very hard to prepare a computer to be able to change its internal clock. Now, this probably won't be much of an effect on your home computer, but it can be really serious problems for more complex systems, things such as in finance, communication, or in GPS systems. Because of all the problems it causes, some people have even suggested scrapping the leap second. In fact, there's even some evidence to suggest that over a long period of a time, other effects even seem to cancel out the leap second. Adding an extra minute on every century is a lot easier to some people than adding a leap second every few years. And in fact, the future of the leap second is set to be discussed at a communications conference in November this year. So who knows, this could be the last ever leap second.
So you're probably not going to make the most of the leap second, especially if you live in the UK, where the leap second is added at midnight. But there are going to be plenty of people all the way around the world that are struggling with the technologies, computers, that are struggling to cope with the extra second that's being added tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for some really good science videos. Answer the question in the comments below, do you think we should keep the leap second or not? Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitter, at UK Astronaut, and I'll see you guys all soon. Let's face it, we've all seen how bad it is to bring dinosaurs back to life, put them on an island, build a theme park around them, and ignore the wise words of Jeff Goldblum. Yet, given the chance, surely all of us would love to go to a giant theme park filled with Jurassic creatures.